All right, what is up, everybody? Shout Scout 0013 here, reporting in for another unit breakdown slash overview, and or whatever you would like to call it. But I'm gonna talk about Anakin Skywalker today in a little bit of depth, so that people can understand a little bit more about him and how to play him, and kind of what he goes well with, and yeah, just a, a few different ways. He's very versatile. And I like it. He can be used offensively or defensively. He's a great leader. And yeah, there's just so much about him that's pretty awesome. And there, since he can, you know, you know, use force upgrades of Sith or Jedi, it's pretty cool. So yeah, I'll talk about him today and go over the twenty-five dollar gift card. You know, that's going over right now, and it should be by. I think next week I'll be able to introduce the winner for that $25 gift card. So if you are a subscriber and you leave a comment, that is how you enter. And I'll go over a few other things now. So if you haven't already, you can head to the Discord. We have steadily been growing, which is really nice. It's really cool to be able to see how many people are here. I think it's like 191, 2, 192, 3 people, which is awesome. We're still close to 200, so if you want to join up, Feel free. That would be awesome. You know, jump into any kind of chat. So, like, Darth here was asking about some questions. Bungle here was asking some questions about Vader. You know, anything you've got questions about, feel free to post them in here. You know, Emperor Atlantis or the Chosen One or me or someone else will try to come over and help you out. And if you have any rules questions, general chat, you know, if you're, you're building stuff and you'd like to show everybody and or if you win at a tournament and you win your games, feel free to please post that and tell us how you did and how it went because your your battle, I'd, I'd like to say, your game can help others figure out what works, what doesn't work, how to kind of use somebody and yeah, so, and if you want, you know, if you got Shatterpoint stuff, feel free to post them in Shatterpoint. We haven't had anybody really post much since, you know, mid-July. It's been about a month and a half since he went to post it on there because it's really a Star Wars Legion place, and you know we have an MCP spot in polls. But yeah, feel free to join up. We've got other stuff going on soon for the Discord. If you haven't already, you can head over to the Clan of Shadows Patreon where you can support me and this channel and help it grow, help me to be able to do these giveaways as well. As well, we're doing a Patreon giveaway. So if you're a Patreon member, I'm trying to just do a drawing soon and. You know, I'm going to give it until the same time that I'm drawing the $25 one to do a $30 gift card for the Patreon members so that you guys who are Patreon members not only get these videos early every either Sunday or Monday, but you get chances to win the, you know, giveaways more. You know, you get more things because like with the memberships, you know, you, you basically there's a dollar, there's $5, there's $10 and $25. You know, even the dollar is really awesome and really helps to show your support for this channel. So feel free to go ahead and go there. Also, you can head to the burnacademy.com where you can, can subscribe for 15 bucks a month. And you get three, four, five, and six day week workout programs, corrective exercise stuff, 30 minute torture programs in case you're short on time. There's at home workouts in case you don't have a gym, stuff for your abs and core for even at home. And I've done a little bit of changing now. So for consultations, you know, if you wanted to and you commit, you can, you know, go through a bodybuilding program with me. You can go through a corrective exercise specialty with me. So, like, if you have been injured and you're trying to get out of that pain and you want to get back into lifting heavy or just lifting again, you know, we can go through a corrective exercise uh, program and or glute training. So if you just specifically want to strengthen your glutes and your hips and your legs, you know, we can come up with an eight week program just for you. So feel free to check all of this out. And if you have any questions, feel free to just hit me up. You know, I'm ready to help and do what I can to get people healthy. I've been doing it for over 10 years now. So yeah. All right, let's get back to it. So let's look at Anakin. So, Anakin, yeah, he is not 160 points. He's 155. They've gone down just a little bit. He has six health, which is really nice. Three courage, which is great, especially for, you know, for Republic. Uh, he doesn't surge to anything, which is pretty common, I feel like. And then he's got speed two, and then five red, impact three, pierce three, which is the highest and the coolest. And then he's also got jump. So when you perform a move, you can, you know, ignore height one or lower. And it's a move action. 
and flawed. So anytime that you have suppression, so let's look at his flaw card real quick. So not a story the Jedi would tell you. So you may play your opponent may basically play this card at the beginning of the command phase. So when the command phase is starting, you'll play this card if there's an enemy Anakin with at least one suppression token. That Anakin cannot be issued in order. So if you have Anakin and you're playing him, and at the end of the round he is still left with a suppression, at the beginning when you're of the command phase, when you're picking cards, your opponent will pl probably play this, and you cannot give any orders to Anakin Skywalker. Now, th I mean, there's not any way around it. Even CC Initiative, you, you can't give him CC Initiative with that. So you're kind of stuck with out an order on him. He is immune to pierce, you know, melee or ranged, and he is tempted, which means that you can equip any upgrades of any alignment. Now, Dim So Mastery. So this says, when defending, if you spend a dodge token, you gain surge to block, or surge to defense. So that means even in melee, or ranged, if you spend the dodge token, you gain surge to defense. He is the only Jedi besides, you know, Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan, it's not Dim So, it's something else. Let's see, what is it specifically? It is... Sorsu, that's right. Sorsu Mastery also allows you to do the same thing. But with Anakin, you don't have to bring into the fray on him because he's going to gain search defense if he has a dodge token, period. So that's really, really, really nice. And if at least one hit or crit result was canceled after spinning that dodge, the attacker suffers a wound. And here's a little caveat to it. So if Anakin is in heavy cover and has a dodge or two, you know, someone shoots and three hits land. Well, two go away to cover, and you spend a dodge to cancel one. You don't even have to roll. Your opponent still winds up taking a wound because one hit result was canceled when you spend that dodge. Or if even just one hit winds up coming through and you spend that dodge to get rid of it, your opponent is still taking a wound, which is really nice. It's basically a free wound to give your opponent. And then whenever you roll, you know, that surge to block. It's just a surge to block, which is really nice. I don't see deflect or anything in here. So, yeah. It's just really, really nice to be able to give an automatic wound when you cancel a hit or crit. And eventually he does gain surge to um, surge to attack, and he also can negate crits with outmaneuver. So, with his one pip, this is where the fun begins. It's a permanent card, so Anakin's going to gain outmaneuver and relentless, which meaning he can cancel crits with his dodges, and he can move, move, and do a free attack action. At the end of his activation, if he was not the first friendly unit to activate during the current round, he's going to gain a suppression token. The crazy thing about all of his cards is that the suppression token clause stays it's also permanent so not only do you have to make him after you play this card not only do you always have to go with him first or you gain a suppression but all the other cards if he did not perform an attack so if he wasn't the first to go and didn't perform attack then he's going to gain a suppression or two suppression and then with his three pip you know if he's not within range of a one to two of a friendly unit he's going to also gain a suppression token so there's three things you're really going to have to look out for each time he gets stronger so, that's his one pip. He's going to be able to gain all of that, which is really nice, but he's got to be the first to go and or gain a suppression token. So, his two pip, you underestimate my power. This is also permanent, and it's Anakin and a unit, which is really nice because it used to just be Anakin. So, Anakin Skywalker gains Surge to Crit and Master of the Force 1 and Defend 1. So, finally, you don't have to spend a recover action to get your Force stuff back. He's just going to automatically have Master of the Force 1, which will ready a spent or exhausted force slot. He's also going to gain a dodge token whenever you give him an order, and when he attacks, he's got surge to crit, which is really nice for fire supports. So if you have a saber throw, and after you've played this card, and or his one pip, and he's the first to go, and you didn't attack, he's not getting any suppression, but you can use that surge to crit for to start a fire support with a, another clone unit and then gain, that whole dice pool gains surge to crit. That's really, really, really nice. And then Hero of the Clone Wars. 
Anakin and two units. And but all of all of his command cards, well, I should say two out of three of his command cards say unit and not trooper unit. So this is really nice to be able to give it to anybody or anything. This is also permanent. So Anakin Skywalker gains exemplar and reliable too. So he's going to be able to share his tokens, green tokens, his aim, dodges, and I think his surges, not standbys, with anyone at range one to two. He's also going to gain two surge tokens each round. So maybe if you also gave him an order, he's going to gain two surge tokens and a dodge after you've played his two pip. And then at the end of his activation, if he's not at range one to two of a friendly unit, he's going to gain a suppression token. So usually you're going to play, people play this one first, and he's usually within range one to two of a unit. And then, you know, maybe this is where the fun begins, and or you underestimate my power goes next for the most part. So he's just got to stay within range one to two, and then he's got to make an attack. The easiest way to also make an attack if he's not in melee is to have saber throw on him so that he does have at least a ranged attack as well as a melee so that this force this card allows him to not have to gain suppression token so yeah those are all three of his command cards now let's take a look at some of the force upgrades that you usually see on him and or that i think are pretty good so usually some of the top upgrades that i've seen and or would do myself is burst of speed because having him just kind of be that character that needs to either get an objective if there's if you are on the wrong foot or if you are on the back foot I should say and you know you're getting pushed back or they have a really fast army and they're getting away with either the hostage or a box or something like that and you need to get in burst of speed is really good now it might leave you out of range one to two of another friendly unit but if you have barks or if you have anything like the uh, arc troopers that have gone forward and scouted for the most part you might be near that range one to two of a friendly unit so with burst of speed you're gonna have to be careful but it can be worth it i found it amazing on you know darth maul so i know darth maul is not anakin but at the same time having it on a having it on a force user either with that relentless and being able to double move and get into you know melee with everyone else that's really really nice but you just have to make sure that, you know, he doesn't have suppression at the end. Force Barrier is another good one I have seen. So to make him more defensive, unlike Burst of Speed, which is really offensive, Burst of, uh, Force Barrier really allows you to protect your expensive clones. So I highly recommend this because with also Master of the Force 1, after you lay his 2-pip down, you're going to be able to get that back without having to recover. Force Choke is still a good one on him. Yes, they did change a lot of Force Choke. They made it more expensive, and they just made it to where it's just a trooper unit. You don't get to pick what trooper mini it is. It's just a trooper mini out of the unit. Not special. But it's still good just in case he's in melee, and he's in melee with two people, and there's only one person on, or one mini out of a unit that's against him. So you can just Force Choke them, get rid of them, and then Force Push someone else and just leave melee pretty easily. So Force Choke is still a good one to have. Force Push, you know, if you're, again, you're being pretty offensive, Force Push is amazing to have because this is something that no one else has in the game other than Force users, and it is important, especially for objective play. Force Push is an amazing objective card, and it's a free action. You know, you can... So, and so this kind of came up in another game, and I had to kind of help him out there, but... So Relentless is immediately triggered after a move so you cannot if you're going to plan on attacking you cannot move force push and then relentless you just it, because relentless is triggered after a move so you would have to move relentless and then force push so that's one of the biggest things that like i am always thinking about and that's another reason why i prefer maul almost almost over all the other force users almost over other force users but with maul he has three actions when he has a wound so you can technically move move and then attack or you can move claim force push and attack there the, the combination is almost endless no i should say i shouldn't say endless but there's tons of possibilities that you know having three actions in any order is is great so that's the only issue I have with Relentless, but, you know, having a, a Force user with 
relentless or steady or whatever is amazing to have. So yeah, force push. Yeah, you just be careful that you don't move and then try to force push someone into you and use relentless. You have to move and relentless and then force push or just double move relentless and then maybe force push someone else into you but yeah you can't use force push in between a move and relentless force reflexes uh, with there's so many other things to take other than force re reflexes and not really Jedi mind trick hope I've never seen on a force user ever really and then saber though is a great one to have because it's stupid you know when he needs to attack if he's not in melee with someone but he's at range one or two of somebody you can throw three red dice at somebody and you might even have surge to crit and then not only can you throw your surge to crit three red dice but you can also fire support with an rps and it would be impact three plus the rps impact two so impact five and then you're rolling however many dice at that range too and yeah you can really do some serious damage plus it'd be pierce three so that's a, a great way to take down some armor and some for some force, or sorry, for some training upgrades. Endurance would probably be one of the top ones, especially if you're going to make him offensive. Endurance is going to be able to get rid of that suppression token in case you can't commit or in case you don't want to go first with Anakin and you've already played his one pip where he needs to go be the first one to activate. You know, he's going to gain a suppression token if he's not. So endurance at least is going to be able to get rid of that suppression. Now, if he's getting attacked all the time, you're going to need someone with Inspire, or you're going to just need to recover him before the end of the round if he's got too much suppression. But at the same time, it's just kind of like, do you, you, maybe you might as well want him to play that not a story the Jedi would tell early. So you never really know. You know, maybe you just get it out of the way to begin with and you don't take Endurance, but that's just up to you. It's, but I think Endurance is a great one to have on him because it's going to get rid of that extra suppression from the at least command cards. You don't need into the fray because not only is he going to have reliable two, but he's going to have surge to block when he spends a dodge. So you kind of want more dodge tokens on him. I wouldn't take offensive push because that's a recover action you're going to need, and it's just not worth it. Offensive defensive stance. If you're planning on making him very defensive, and I say defensive as in like you're not using him to go after a ton of units, but you're using him to really support and be a, a token generator slash linebacker, then offensive defensive stance is great because of that exemplar, and you gain two dodge tokens, and again, if you spend the dodge token to cancel at least a hit or crit, and after you place one pip, you can outmaneuver, so if you've spent that dodge, they gain a wound, so I can see offensive defensive stance being a really, really good one, regardless. You know, seize the initiative could be okay. Especially if you've played the card where he needs to activate first, but then you need to give orders to somebody else. Seize initiative could be really great. You don't need situational awareness. Tenacity is a good one, because then you'd have six red dice, surge to crit, and pierce three, impact three. Yeah, tenacity is a great one to have on him. But then also another good one to have on him is up close and personal, because after you perform a ranged attack at range 1 to 2, which safer throw is specifically 1 to 2, you're going to get a dodge token. And again, his dim so really benefits from dodge tokens. So kind of like having up close and personal and offensive defensive stance is a great way to make sure he's loaded up with dodges. And then, you know, saber throw and force push. I mean, that's a pretty good, you know, if you're trying to keep him behind as a linebacker and just share your tokens this is a good way to do it you know you could instead of saber throw go with force barrier or sorry instead of force push really go with uh, barrier and then keep saber throw and have up close and personal and offensive defensive stance you're staying back and you're just protecting your guys so this is a good little defensive way to have him if you want to make him more offensive maybe you go with endurance up close and personal and then again instead of force barrier go with force push and instead of saber throw, maybe you decide to go with burst of speed. Just get him into melee as fast as possible so that you can attack. Or, you know, instead of burst of speed, maybe you stuck with saber throw. That way he move moves and still does range attack that you can fire support with with other clones. So there's lots of ways to really benefit from what he's got. And even without up close 
uh, and personal, you go with tenacity, force push, saber throw. It's a little bit cheaper, and he still has a way to get rid of suppression, get that extra dice when he's wounded. Now you're you're kind of crapping yourself out on dodge tokens, but you know at least you're able to move more freely and do stuff than having to take a dodge action and then move. Because having to take that dodge action to get two dodges is really nice. You can't spend any aims, or, you know, you decide to flip it and do offensive stance and get two aims, and you can't spend any dodge tokens, which really, really sucks, especially for Enkin. But yeah, that's that's some different ways to use him. If we want to look at, real quick at Anakin, what jives well with him, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi can jive well, uh, Clone Captain Rex would do very well, Yoda, but you'd probably have only maybe eight activations, maybe. Probably seven, closer to it. I feel like the Clone Commander is really good with Anakin Skywalker because it's just a nice person to have to be able to hand out even more surge tokens. Padme obviously goes really well with him. Phase 1s go well with him. Again, that also makes the list a little bit cheaper. And then arcs, especially the strike teams, go really well together. And if you're wondering why, you know, they put that, you know, you just need to save points, which is why the strike teams do very well with him. But it just kind of really depends on, you know, really how you want to build your list. So let's just take a look at a few different lists that I've made uh, with Anakin. So Anakin, I've given Burst of Speed, Force Push, Tenacity, and Endurance. Again, if you want to make it a little bit cheaper, maybe you forego the Burst of Speed and you just give him Saber Throw so that you can start the, the fire support a little bit better. But this is where he wants to just move and do some stuff. Then you have the Clone Commander with Improvised Orders. You've got a Phase 1 with Waxer and the RPS-6. You've got another one with the RPS-6 and a Phase 1 Clone Specialist with an extra aim. And the reason I have Waxer on this RPS unit is because of the Scout 1 and the Disciplined 1. So he's also going to be a leader and one of the last ones to die. But that Scout 1 is allowing that RPS to get closer because it is cumbersome. And the Disciplined 1 is to make sure that you know if you were to give it an order, especially from the Clone Commander just giving it an order, then you won't have to work. You can take off a Suppression. So then you you know that you take off suppression, and then when you roll, maybe there's one less suppression that you have to roll, obviously, but maybe you had three, now you got two to roll, and then maybe you had two, and now you only have one to roll, and if you don't get it off, well, you, it just depends, so, or you maybe you just had one, but yeah, the, the disciplined one's really nice, and the scout one's really nice for that RPS. The reason I have the phase one clone specialist on here is because of that extra aim, or that, that free aim, dodge, or surge token. It's probably going to be an aim or a surge, at least for the clones. Probably more than likely an aim because you're going to have two search tokens off Anakin with Reliable 2, and then you're probably going to have the Clone Commander with the, what is it, the bolster and hand out search tokens. Then I have another phase one with the DC 15 and a Clone Medic, and then another phase one with five, bringing it up to Courage 2, and the Clone Medic. So maybe if you were to, you know, have the Clone Commander give out an order to fives so who could coordinate to Waxer and and then you've got uh, lots of units that can fire support with Anakin or do whatever they need to do. And then another DC, like I said, DC-15 with the Clone Medic. And then I have an arc three strike teams, one with Echo, the other two with the DC-15. That can also start fire supports. You know, they don't surge or anything, but, you know, Echo at least has reliable one. So that's something. And if he were to shoot, maybe your, uh, your DC-15 could also contribute another two red, and it would be... Critical 1, Lethal 1, or sorry, Critical 2, Lethal 1, so you could spend an aim token, and more than likely with t 4 red at range 4, you're going to, with Critical 2, you, your chances of getting some crits are really nice, and then having that aim to be able to pierce it is even better. So yeah, that comes out to 9 activations, 793, leaving you another at least 6 points to be able to spend on whatever. And with the Arc Trooper Strike Team, having the environmental gear wouldn't even be bad, because that's leaving them unhindered, so they don't have to worry about being behind cover and then trying to lower their speed to get around, leaving them at speed 2 whenever they're behind a barricade and trying to move out, leaving them at speed 2 so they can get that range shot that they need to get. So that's one way of doing it. There's no... No barks, no any kind of vehicles, and you've got impact. Oh, you've got a lot of impact in here because with at least Anakin's impact three and then the RPS impact two, 
on each one of them, that's what impact three, five, seven, and then at least a critical here, critical here. So lots of ways to get some crits through. And then let's look at another one. So we'll look at Anakin 501st. And he's a little bit more defensive on this one. So Anakin's got force barrier, saber throw, so that he can fire off that, start the fire support, I should say. And then he's got offensive, defensive stance, and up close and personal, so you can just generate dodges like crazy. Now, whenever you start the fire support, if you're in defensive stance, remember, you cannot spin those aims. So you've got to be careful on using offensive, defensive stance, but it's a great one to have. You know, improvised orders on a clone commander who can give out an order to fives, who can coordinate to the other phase twos. So now both of your, both your core have an order. So you have a little bit better order control because then the rest of them, you know, you have some arc troopers, two full uh, arc trooper teams, one with Echo because not only does he have an extra health, so it can make this last a little bit longer, or make him last a little bit longer, but again, he gains that, you know, that critical one, lethal one for the whole dice pool. So that's really nice. And then I've got a strike team and then two barks, because in the 501st, you have to have a support. So that's where the two barks come in, and you can only have up to two. You can't have three, which is really weird, because then it just kind of messes up bombing run. So you're kind of screwed on that. But th he's defensive so that you kind of make the most out of your clones and do what you can with them, with them and let them be the start of the show while you protect them and set them up for stuff. And, yeah, it's nice to have. You know, maybe with that extra four points, you can just give Echo's team situational awareness. Or not a gear, but, yeah, situational awareness. That way, if they need to spend any of Anakin's dodges, they at least can cancel crits as well keeping them alive a little bit longer since they are already so expensive. Uh, I've already gone with intercept, key positions, hostage, and breakthrough because, again, you've got the bark speeders and then you've got some arc troopers in there. And he's very defensive, trying to save as much of these guys as possible. It's not the most defensive one, but it is pretty good. So nine activations. I have a regular 501st again, a little bit more defensive with Anakin with still force barrier, saber throw, offensive, defensive, stance, and up close and personal. Clone commander with no upgrades, a phase two with fives, another phase two with the phase two mortar and a clone medic, and then another phase two with the Z6 and clone medic so that you have as many clone medics as you can handle. And then different ways to set up fire supports and kind of longer range. And then you have two strike teams, one with Echo and one with a regular DC-15, and then two ATRTs with a laser cannon. And they can also start fire supports because they surge to hit, which is really, really nice. So they're going to surge to hit. And if you were to do the ATRT, you know, range two to four, it's three dice, impact three. And maybe you decided to, if you are too far behind, maybe use the phase twos to add an extra two black dice at that range four. And it would be critical one. Yeah, critical one, impact three. So lots of ways to make sure you're getting crits. Or... I have the Z6 in here in case the ATRT fires or fires, and then the Phase 2s want to fire support that Z6, giving you a ton of dice, because the Z6 is what, 6 white? Yeah, and then you've got 4, 5 black. Yeah, that's 11 dice already, and then maybe you're fire supporting the ATRT, so that would be what, 11, 12, 13, 14 dice. Uh, 14 dice. Impact 3, you would be reliable 1, so you'd have at least a surge token that you could use. Yeah, that would be a really awesome, awesome fire support. Or, you know, with Anakin Saber Throw, surging to crit, maybe you decided to go with Anakin and fire supported with the Z6 11 dice. With the extra 3, giving you, again, 14 dice, surging to crit this time. And, yeah, that just outstanding fire supports so and what's really doing well are big dice pools so that's why i think that that z6 was well needed and then the clone medics obviously you can never underestimate the clone medics because they fight and they heal and last but not least and i have the the two atrts in there mostly to line of sight block so anakin can kind of make sure he gets in and also since he's defensive and these guys block line of sight, you're keeping your, your clones alive a little bit longer and a little bit easier. 
All right, and last but not least, I have Anakin and Barks, specifically to make sure that breakthrough and or bombing run is a lot easier, and then key positions and hostage exchange is really good for Anakin. And he's a little bit more offensive this time with saber throw, force push, endurance, and tenacity to kind of make sure that he gets that extra red dice in melee. He's got force push to manipulate the objective play. He's got saber throw to start the fire supports and or just make sure he can get that attack off. And then endurance to make sure he shuffles off that suppression so that maybe he gets those two actions for sure. A uh, clone commander with vigilance so that he can keep the dodge tokens on either Anakin or any of the other the phase ones. I've got a phase one with the RPS and waxer again to be able to get that scout one disciplined one so that the RPS can aim and shoot or at least shoot and move. I've got a phase one with fives and the clone medic and just in case that the clone commander gives an order from coordinate or direct I should say to the phase ones with fives and then the fives coordinates to the RPS or the DC 15s and I've got three clone medics in here so I've got you know, a clone medic on fives as unit, and then two clone, or and, and a clone medic on both of the DC 15s. So that way you've got big dice pulls, and that you've got ways to heal Anakin and or other phase ones that need it. And then I have three barks, and the three barks are specifically there again to start the fire supports and or make sure that if you choose bombing run, you can have bombing run and their speed three with a compulse move. So they should be able to get somewhere fast just in case yeah and you know I have air support in here just like and I have everything set up in the other ones just in case so I leave these copied and pasted down below in the description so that way if you ever wanted to go look at them and or try them and use them that they're all ready for you and they're all nine activations because I believe that eight activations is too low yes you know Lila Claire had the eight activations for worlds and still came in second but that's because you know, the uh, the skill level is up there, and not everybody can win on eight activation, eight act lists. Plus, I also feel with eight acts, I mean, I'm here to play a game. I'm not here to 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 lose. And I kind of, even if I do lose with nine activations, I feel like the game goes a little bit longer, and I get to play, and I have more more activations for better plays than low activations and really trying to play safely. I, I, I've got some stuff to expend. So like with Empire, you can get, you know, 10, 11 activations pretty easily. And, you know, you've got some room to spare, which is really nice to have. So with, with Republic, I've tried to at least have those nine activations because they, they de definitely need to have some stuff. And I've got nine activations on most of these lists and most of the most of these lists have almost full units. So like these phase twos, they they both have at least a clone medic. Now fives this doesn't, but that's okay. And then you've got these guys, the arc troopers. You can't add any more to them. And then these phase twos, because I feel like I've got the the full arcs, I can't really bring an extra medic in there. But other than that, yeah, all the other lists at least have a clone medic or waxer or the phase one or something. So you've got more people in those units. Yeah, all right. Well, that is really it. Hopefully you learned a little bit about Anakin, and these are some other list ideas that you can use with him. And if there's other questions that you have, feel free to leave it down below in the comments, and that'll also help you to win the $25 gift card. All you got to do, again, is subscribe and leave a comment. So, yeah, if you've got questions, feel free to to comment down below and or head on over to the discord become just a person in there a member i guess yeah you know shadow command stuff you know clan of shadows yeah just become a member and feel free to post on whatever you'd like head on over to the patreon and support this channel and even if it's a dollar that's perfectly fine like you're helping with the giveaways and helping me make sure that i keep this going and then also you can head on over to theburnacademy.com and for 15 bucks a month you can subscribe, download the app, and you've got everything at your fingertips to begin looking like a pro in the gym. So that is it guys. I want to really give a shout out to all of the Patreon members. I want to give a special shout out to Tyson. I want to give a special shout out to the Special Forces leaders, Kitsune, Emperor Atlantis, and Daniel Padilla, and then the Shadow Commander, Anthony Estrada, or the Chosen Juan. 
for doing so much for this channel and i really appreciate all of you guys thank you so much for what you do and for your support and for the, everybody else i thank you so much for listening even to this far and may the force be with you and you'll have a great day